Hello and welcome to another episode of Foodie Friday. My name is Emily Leggett. I'm the teen librarian at the Tewksbury Public Library and today we're going to learn how to make gingerbread trifles. The really cool part is we're going to break it down two different ways you can make it. As a large serving to bring to a party or something like that or share with friends and family or individual serving sizes. Here is your ingredient list. There are some important things to note. If you can get butterscotch pudding already made, that is ideal. If not, try to get instant. If you really can't cook and serve, it just gets a little bit more dicey. Cool Whip, it depends which size you're doing. If you're making an individual cup, you're good with an eight ounce container of Cool Whip. You may need more depending on the size of your trifle bowl if you're doing a larger portion. Now that you know all the things you need, let's get right into it. First things first, we are gonna make our spice cake. That is gonna be our bottom layer and our middle layer of our trifle. So you're gonna follow the directions on the back of the box. You're gonna pour the spice cake mix into the bowl. Make sure you get all of that out. Sometimes it gets stuck in the little bag. Now next up, we're gonna do eggs. As always, do as I say, not as I do. I highly suggest breaking eggs in a separate bowl. So if there is any shell left in, you can pull it out and it's not in your mix. But I'm me, so. I did it directly over the bowl. I do not suggest doing this. Next, you'll add one cup of water and half a cup of vegetable oil. The last step here is to mix it. I use a hand mixer. If you don't have one, you can use a spoon. It works just the same, it's just the amount of time. It's a little bit easier for me to use a hand mixer. So you're gonna mix it all up until it's smooth and looks like that, and then transfer it to your cake pan. I used the two eight inch ones. You can use whatever size you have, just please follow the back of the box for how long it needs to cook. Very helpful here if you have a plastic spatula like I have here, or if you have a spoon that you can really get the rest of the mix off. Make sure it's even in each container and then you're going to cook it at 350 degrees for 24 to 28 minutes, depending on your oven. Follow what your oven needs first. So if you know your oven needs more or less than the box says, go by that. All right, next up is ginger snaps. The most important portion here is breaking up your ginger snaps because this is going to be on top of your Cool Whip. This is like the pretty layer on top and one of the layers in the middle. You can crack it with your hands. Uh, you can use a spoon to crush it. Once again, do as I say, not as I do, because I thought I was smart and got a spoon to crush it in the plastic bag and just poked holes in the plastic bag and made a big mess. So don't do that. If you're going to do that, put it in a bowl and crush it that way. You can have bigger chunks. You can have it be more of like a crummy. However you want to do it that you prefer works. Now, if you got the pre-made butterscotch pudding, you can skip this step. This is making the box pudding, and if you got it from the library, this is what you're doing. You need two cups of cold milk and the mix on a medium heat. Please get parental assistance if needed, and you're gonna constantly stir it until it's at a boil. Okay, after that, you're going to put it in a container or a bowl and put it in the fridge to chill overnight. If you have the pre-made or the option of the pre-made, please do that. It's so much easier. It's so much easier. But if you do not, this is how you do that step. This is a fantastic time to remind you, as always, before, during, and after cooking, please wash your hands. Um, this is one of my favorite steps of this entire process, which is breaking up your cake. So you're gonna take your cake once it's done cooking and cooled and put it in a bowl and crush it up. Again, this is one of your layers. It depends how crushed you want it. I started being responsible using a spoon and then I got frustrated. So I made sure I rewashed my hands because I've been touching a lot of ingredients and started breaking it up with my hands. This worked much better for me. Do whatever works for you. You, If you did the two pans like I had, then you're going to have two cakes to break up.
as I said at the beginning, I'm gonna show you two different sizes and ways to make this. So once you're done crushing it up, you can put that to the side and get your bowl. If you're doing a regular trifle, a big container like this snowflake one I have, if you're doing individual, there are tiny cups. So the first layer is your spice cake. This example was uh, me making a mistake and forgetting about the pudding, <laughs> but your next step should be putting your pudding down. So once it's chilled, so you can come back to it the next day, or you can skip the pudding if you want. Um, but if you want to include your pudding, this is actually the time for the pudding step. So you should have spice cake, pudding, regardless of which size you're doing, and then you get your Cool Whip. Again, how much Cool Whip you need depends on which size you're making. You do double layers in the bigger bowl because there's more space. An individual cup only has room for one layer, so it'll be your spice cake, your pudding, your Cool Whip, and your crushed cookies. That is the order, okay? And if you're doing a bigger trifle, you're doing spice cake, pudding, Cool Whip, cookies, and you're doing spice cake, pudding, Cool Whip, cookies again. As you see here, I have some of the bigger chunks in the bigger trifle. I did it a little bit smaller in the cups just for space and how it visually looks. You can do whatever you'd like. It will still taste delicious. And there you have it. You have gingerbread trifle. This is the big trifle all made up together. That's what it looks like from the side with the different layers. And then of course we have the tiny individual cups. So whatever works for you, whatever you have available, Go for it. As always, we would love to see what you made or in the process of making it. What did you learn? Did you get creative? Did you change stuff up? Let us know. You can share it with us on social media or email it to us. Thank you for joining us. As always, Food Day Friday is a monthly event. You can find all of our past Foodie Friday videos on our YouTube channel at Tooksbury Lib, or you can sign up each month and get supplies provided for you by the library. We'll see you next time. Bye.